hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another movie review and today we are going to be doing the guinea pig series now guinea pig is a series which has been going on for a long time it started in the mid 80s and as of now there is an american sort of reboot which only has four movies at the moment but um i think that that will change i'll do a video on that when it comes out but these videos are often known for the amount of gore they use and how realistic they are. So I decided to watch all 10, review them, say a bit about their story, uh, the worst part, and rank them all. But before I do that really quick, obviously Discord if you want to suggest anything in the description, and also my Twitter because I post sort of updates on there, so if you want any of that, links in the description. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so starting off obviously with the first guinea pig, which is called Devil's Experiment. It was released in 1985 and was the first one to be released. And it's about a woman who is kidnapped and tortured in a lot of different ways, which is the, the main premise of quite a few of these films. But the reason that this one stands out to me the most is because of the torture methods. It's not sort of just chopping them up, things like that. There's a lot of different things such as being exposed to loud noises for hours, I think it's over days, she's exposed to them just constantly, and also purposely infecting wounds and things like that. And obviously there are, you know, beating, cutting and all that, but uh, they're the, the main things which st stood out to me. It is quite graphic, honestly, for uh, 1985, and it has some, some de decent special effects. And it's a short movie, but... Um, it needs to be. It couldn't have been like any longer than it was. I think it was roughly around 40 minutes and yeah I thought it was a pretty decent movie overall. And the worst part for me was probably when they burned her arm with like this really hot oil and then they started like to pour maggots on like the the wounds. <laughs> yeah it was um pretty cringy. But I'm not going to be saying like the whole plot for a lot of these and um, because I don't really want to spoil it. I just want to try and sell it as, as best I can to you because I highly recommend that you watch a lot of these movies if you're into this type of stuff, obviously. Second, we have Guinea Pig 2, Flower of Flesh and Blood. And this is most likely the most infamous one. Uh, this is on so many lists and just known for being very, very bad. So it was released the same year, 1985, and it's about a girl, again, <laughs> who is kidnapped and disassembled piece by piece, but she is injected with a drug that makes pain, like, feel nice. And it is shown, obviously, in very graphic detail, and the effects are honestly just amazing for, for 85, honestly. Like, there's some effects that I see nowadays, which are not as good as this. Again, it's another quite short one, at around 40 minutes, but again, it needs to be, because it gets a bit boring after <laughs> after about this amount of time. Um, it has some slight humour in it, which obviously the Japanese version builds up on over time, and I thought that that was quite... Uh, it gave it some charm, that's what I'm trying to say. It gave some charm to the movie that I don't think some of the others had, which I really enjoyed. And also the ending... And a lot of these, of the endings, are very good endings, and they sort of leave your mind open. And in this one, it sort of implies that what you have just seen is not the worst that um, this man has done. And it ends on a shot of him going to his next victim. So it was quite a cool ending, and it sort of left a big sinister, I don't know what you would say, smile on my face. Because I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, but in a way... No, that is not kind of cool. <laughs> and the worst scene I would say is, I would say the chopping is all around pretty bad and no part really freaked me out more than any others. So I would say the, the whole film <laughs> is pretty bad. Next we have Guinea Pig 3, He Never Dies. And this was released in 1986. This one is my personal favorite. I love this one so much. And it is about a depressed man who you know, he's not getting on at his job, um, he's lonely, so he decides to, you know, just end it, but then he finds out that he is immortal and he cannot feel pain, so first he tries by, like, you know, cutting his uh, wrists, and then he moves to the neck, but then once he realises that he can't die, 
instead of being sad even more, he then pranks the people that uh, made his life worse. So he calls over someone that obviously he didn't like and just torments him in like the worst way possible by like uh, pulling out his insides in front of him, throwing them at him. And it was very graphic, but at the same time it was very funny because it's so original. It's such like an original idea in a way to show gore. Because when you think of things like that, you just think of someone doing it to someone else. But like this was this was really original and it was also very funny, the film. It had like a lot of jokes in and there was a very good scene at the end where he was just a head <laughs> and he was just on the table speaking to people. Uh, I found that quite funny. But the worst scene was uh, probably when he guts himself, I would say. And then he like lifts up his his skin flap, if you will, and you just see like a spine, like no organs. <laughs> but yeah, pretty cool. And also, this film just looked like a blast just to like shoot because I've seen photos from behind the scenes. It just looked like a really fun film to work on. And the fourth one, I'm gonna say that the fourth one is Devil Doctor Woman, which was released in 1990. And I know that there is a lot of sort of um, confusion on what one is the fourth one and what one is the sixth one. But um, according to the thing, this was the last one which was recorded, but the fourth one released, I think. Um, it's marketed as the fourth one. At the start of it, it says it's the fourth one, but um, so I'm just going to go with that for now. But I know a lot of people disagree with that. I don't really care. I'm just going to call it the fourth one. This is another sort of very good uh, slapstick dark comedy one. This one is more comedy, I would say but that definitely doesn't take away from some of the scenes. And it's about a doctor, um, Peter, who is a Japanese uh, drag queen, uh, very popular in Japan. And it's around 10 weird sort of skits with her patients and how she helps them, which um, it includes a man who is literally decomposing, uh, a group of people whose head explode if they get angry, uh, which was my personal favourite bit, and I'm going to show a scene from that now because it's just hilarious. someone who has a mouth in their stomach and you know just like a wacky things like that it was another good watch and it was also very um, short and sweet which i like but yeah this one was just overall a very very good one and the worst part for me was definitely the the cannibal dinner i'll call it it was very disgusting and it was very unexpected um it was disgusting because of how it looked it just looked gross like even if it wasn't human the food just looked awful and then that added to it but yeah that was um my personal not like bit and fifth we have android of the naughty dam i think it's pronounced and this was released in 1988 this one i'm just going to be honest uh, was my my least favorite one i don't want to say worst because none of them are really bad bad but this was just you know my least favorite and it's about a doctor who wants to find a cure for his sister's disease uh, so he gets offered sort of like a guinea pig to test out on. But then uh, when she dies, he obviously gets mad and then just disassembles it in true guinea pig fashion, <laughs> as everyone does. Another thing which was really weird is that, um, well not weird, but the, the doctor was a dwarf, like um, a short person. And I don't know why he was, why they went with that decision, but... Um, it made it very unsettling, sort of the film, seeing that. Because it's almost childlike and you never really see a child do something like that. But if that was like what they were aiming for, that was that was very good. But um, it had the most story, which was quite good, of, the, of uh, what we've seen so far. And it was quite good in my opinion, it was like very average. And I don't really know a bad part, so I guess the eye part. But just because I don't like eyes. Like, all, all you need to know is that there's something to do with eyes. And eyes make me cringe for some reason, so, uh, yeah. And lastly, for the Japanese ones, we have number six, Mermaid in a Manhole. And this was released in 1988, the same year as the fifth one. And although this isn't my favourite one, um, I will admit that this is the strongest one in the series in terms of everything, story, gore, things like that. 
I just I just prefer dark comedy over things like this. But this was done amazing. I love this one. And the story is about an artist who finds a mermaid in a sewer and takes her to home to like care for her. But she just basically starts to fall apart and grow like blisters and things all over. And of course the blisters are weird colours, so uh, <laughs> the artist decides to paint with them. Of course, why Why wouldn't you? And basically, um, after that happens, she just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And things like that just starts falling apart, you know, like blood, pus everywhere. Very gross, very, very gross. And then, of course, by the end of it, if you haven't guessed already, um, <laughs> she's chopped up, obviously. What else was it going to be? Um... But this was done very well as well. Like, even though um, I'm kind of expecting people to be chopped up by the end of these films, uh, this one was done quite well, I would say. This was the, definitely the best chopping I've seen in a short segment. But the best thing about this film is the ending, where it is implied that the mermaid wasn't actually a mermaid, but his wife, who was ill. Um, but then the film instantly contradicts that by saying that there was a scale found in his apartment of a fish which is unknown. So it's kind of like a what if, you know. Was it his wife or was it the mermaid? Because obviously um, she was chopped up beyond um, recognition. So it's not sure if it was or not. But yeah, very good effects and very good story. And a very, very, very good movie in general. I very enjoyed this. And the worst part, probably the like pussy parts because eel you know that's just a that's just an eel uh like if you've ever if you know Junji Ito if you've ever read the read the short story greased you know the scene where he just like squeezes them all on on, on his sister's face ah that still that still gets me to this day I remember the first time I read that anyway uh Junji Ito video coming next so um I need to stop talking about that and now I'm going to rank them, and I'm also going to rank the American ones and then them all at the end. But for now, in last place, we have Android. In fifth place, we have Devil's Experiment. In fourth place, we have Flowers of Flesh and Blood. In third place, we have Devil Woman Doctor. In second place, we have Mermaid in a Manhole. And in first place, we have He Never Dies. And of course, this is just my own opinion, so feel free to... Leave your own ones in the comment below. I'm actually quite interested to see what other people think of these. Anyway, that is all of the Japanese ones. Now let's move on to the American ones. And now moving on to the American ones. And although there is four of them, I've decided to sort of give more, as in write more about these, because I know that these aren't as popular as the Japanese ones, obviously. They're fairly recent, uh, the first one being released in 2014, and the last one um, on the time of recording this is 2017. They were all, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, they were all produced by Unearthed Films, who did a very good job, in my opinion. All of these were pretty good films. Okay, so kicking things off, we have the first American guinea pig film, which is called Bouquet of Guts and Gore, and it was released in 2014. And just before I get into these, I don't really want to compare them, as they're not remakes, they're just sort of continuations. But um, I will obviously be saying which ones they're similar to in story. So this one, in terms of story and content, is similar to the second Japanese one, Flowers of Flesh and Blood. It's around 70 minutes of just torture and a few bits of dialogue and it had very good effects. I can't fault the effects at all. They were all great and very, very, very good. However, it was kind of hard for me to watch, not because of the gore or anything like that, mainly because my attention span is limited to like a whole two, maybe two and a half seconds. So when there was basically a silent... Not silent, but you know, nothing happening for like 20 minutes before you see a, a, like a drop of blood. It was not a disappointment because, you know, you can't just start every film that has this runtime with something insane. But just personally for me, because um, as I said, my attention span is like 2.5 seconds. But um, I can understand why it needed it. It made it look more authentic as it was trying to convey itself as literally just a snuff film. Um, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny. Um... I think this is sort of like a, an inside joke for, for people on the series, but um, you always start on the left. And if you've watched the film, you know, you know what that means. That made me laugh a few times. That was like a recurring joke. And I've been on like a few forums and things, and like a lot of people are saying that 
So I'm assuming that's just like a big inside joke, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that made me laugh a few times. But um, apart from that, it was fine. Like there was, you know, the chopping of two women and there's not really much else to say on that. But then, as I said earlier, in true guinea pig style, of course it ends with them being chopped up, but in other guinea pig style, the ending flips the film on its head the same way which the second one did, again, basically presenting itself as mm, like a child's film compared to what is about to happen or what had happened. And in this case, it was what's about to happen, as you see the same two tables which the women were just on, who you just sat through the film with, and there is like a baby which is around one, I would say, and a child which is about five, and you know what's uh, what's about to happen when they're on their tables. In the same way, it left me feeling the second one, sort of like, you you have a smile on your face because you're like, that's a sick ending. That's that's like a that's like an amazing ending, but at the same time it's kind of like, wow, that's that's kind of fucked. But you know it's just like one of them one of them things, which is very good. I like them endings a lot, but I just prefer the original mainly mainly because of the runtime, and if I'm being completely honest, the second one was kind of camp in a way, which I just love about like all eighty films a lot. But this one was like, I don't know. It just adds to uh, how 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 the overall opinion came across on me, you know, because it's slightly. Slightly camp, especially the the main person in the in the Japanese one. It was quite quite weird when you <laughs> looking back on it. But uh, yeah, it was a good film though. It was a very good film. And the worst part for me, probably the whole disassembling, like in the second one, because I didn't think there was a standout part again. It was all as bad as it's uh, as bad as like what happened before. So that's what I have to say on the first one. Very good film. Um, however, it was hyped up a bit too much for me. As I heard, it's like, it's insane, and like, it's been thought of as an actual snuff film. It's been on, you know, it's been on the dark web and things like that, and people actually thought it was real. Um, I don't know if then, like, that's actually true or anything, but I heard a lot of discussion around things like that, so my hopes were pretty high going in. So maybe that's why it didn't give me the same um, feeling it did as maybe someone who just went in blind, but um, either way, it was a very good film. Now, moving on to the second one, called The Blood Shock and this was released in 2015. So again, uh, comparing but not comparing to the Japanese one, this would be a retelling of the fifth one, as it's about a doctor. This doctor puts his patients through like a lot of pain to extract these chemicals from their bloodstream, which I think he's doing to research something. This sort of had, um, it had more story than the first one and less gore, but that made it more enjoyable for me because it kept my attention longer as, um, you know, there was something for me to look forward to which was the ending which was insane like jesus christ the ending was amazing but at the same time disgusting and i'll get onto that in a minute but anyway apart from that the film is shot in black and white apart from the one scene at the end and the effects are great as usual as i said there's more story than gory in this film <laughs> and it was around 90 minutes about uh just like 10 20 minutes longer than the first one and it didn't waste any time like in the first I think five minutes the the main person's tongue is cut off and basically through the film the male patient is communicating with a female patient next door and a thing i really enjoyed about this film is the style of torture that sounds very dark i do not <laughs> i do not torture people um i'm just saying it was refreshing to not just see people get chopped as there was things like obviously he would cut them open but then instead of just removing the limb he would just cut the bone, like, straight in half, and then sew the, the wound back up, and things like that. So it's, like, very cringy, because you don't see much about bones. Bone torture, that, that's the word for it. But yeah, it was it was very creative, and it was using things like piano wire to cut, like, the spine. What are they called? Discs? In between that, it's just very eel, do you know what I mean? <laughs> things like that. But anyway, it was uh, very good, very good. So basically, towards the end, the female patient is... I'm um, getting about to get, you know, pained. Um, but then she sneaks in like a, what do you call it? Scalpel or something like that. Stabs the doctor in the eye, kills these two people and then goes to see the male patient who she hasn't seen yet, but has been like communicating with through use of paper and crayons as both of their tongues were cut out, as I mentioned earlier. And this is where, as you know, on this channel, I don't like to over-exaggerate and I'm never like, 
do not watch this film. This film is this film is terrible. Do not watch this film. I'd never say anything like that. Maybe maybe when I get to like the very last tiers of the, the movie iceberg I'll be saying that. But so far I I haven't said that because I can see why people like these movies, you know, like I like these movies a little bit. But as I said, I'm not one to over exaggerate. But when I say that my jaw literally dropped, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm being a hundred percent serious. As this was more just just mind blowing for me because of I just you just don't expect it. It just comes out of nowhere, and I have to talk about it. Basically, <laughs> what happens is the woman goes into his like um his room where he's being being kept and oh, <laughs> oh basically they, they get it on you know they start to do the, the the adult thing that adults do together but the things they get like slightly messy because you know they're fresh out of torture there's a bit of blood on them and whatever I'm just like oh well that's that's expected but then they start to get more and more into each other if that makes sense such as like reopening the wounds and like sticking their hand in it and like there's this one who has a a cut in his stomach and she like puts her hand through it and like (laughs) and they also you know start to like eat each other at one point and then just like pull out things which shouldn't be pulled out if i'm being honest and this is all in uh, colour, by the way. This is the only part of the film which isn't in colour. So it starts at, like, zero and ends at, like, ten million. But the thing which made this scene the worst is the music and the editing. Without that, this scene wouldn't have been nearly as bad. The music very slowly builds up and the editing and cinematography is surround shots and they slowly and slowly get sped up and sped up and sped up and there's more cuts To the point where you see like a split second of something and you're like, what the fuck was that? And then like you need to focus on what's happening on the screen because there's something else which is even worse than what's just happening. It just keeps building up. up, up. Like like what I was trying to say with my voice, it just kept going, kept going, kept going until they were both just dead on the floor. And in a way, that's kind of a very, what do you call it, tragic love story in a very weird way. But it was quite a good ending, I would say, as... In a lot of these films, if you escape, you don't really, you're not really going to live a normal life. So maybe it was better that they both died with each other. Um, yeah, this was very weird, but also very good, possibly. I'm still completely confused about it. And I watched this film like a few days ago and I, I've been thinking about it. It hasn't kept me up at night. As I said, I'm not going to exaggerate. I, I haven't lost sleep over it, but I've definitely thought about the ending a lot. Not because it disturbed me, but just because it was so weird and unexpected and I was trying to think what it meant. But yeah, this was a very, very, very good ending. And the worst scene was obviously the last scene, but um, a good film, I would say. Yeah, good film. Jesus Christ, if this <laughs> this video gets even monetized after that last sentence, um, I'd be very surprised. But oh well, I just enjoy talking about these movies. Moving on. Number three, The Song of Solomon, and this was released in 2017. So, instead of comparing this, but not comparing this, to an original guinea pig title, it's best described, to me at least, as The Exorcist meets guinea pig. Sort of, The Exorcist plot meets people who make American guinea pig, so you can already tell what's that going to be like. But I guess the closest it would be to an actual film that's already been made would be Devil Doctor Woman, sort of one of the skits in it. It isn't similar, but like it would fit well as one of the skits or one of the patients. So basically, if you can't already tell, um, it's basically a, uh, a girl that's possessed like in The Exorcist and priests come to exorcise her. This film is around 90 minutes and it has a quite good story. This is probably the most story-based one as there's a lot of dialogue and things like that. But at the same time, it doesn't take away from the, you know, the the original guinea pig feeling. Because in the first few minutes, a priest slits his throat, puts his hand up his throat, grabs his tongue, and then pulls it through his throat. 
in, in, like, in like the first two minutes. So yeah, this was very this got into it very quick as well. But obviously there are breaks here and there to like speak about what what she could be, and the acting isn't amazing. But like with films like this, it's hard to find you know professional actors where it's like, okay, so you're a professional actor that's been in like really popular things. What we're gonna want you to do is um to pull your tongue through your throat. <laughs> so I can't really see um, many people wanting to do that, but I would. I would. I would definitely like. I think a lot of people that are into these films are the same people that are in these films. If that makes sense. Like I feel like they're just in the film because they want to be in a film where they get like chopped up. Because that would be cool. That would be very cool to watch myself get chopped up in a film. But uh, apart from that, I try to always like ignore the acting because I know it's not going to be brilliant. But uh, yeah. Pretty solid, I would say. And this one probably has the highest kill count, I would say. Just the amount of priests that get, like, killed <laughs> in very gruesome ways. But, um, yeah, good film. And the ending, again, guess what the ending's like? Yep, that's right, insane. So the last priest, in order to get rid of the demon, has to have sex with the possessed girl. To be rid of the demon, if you will. So he does that, and then she gets pregnant like instantly and gives birth instantly and at the same time dies i'm pretty sure and then the priest takes the baby carries it downstairs to where the mum and dad are of the daughter and i'm pretty sure the dad says hell satan and then stabs the mum in in the throat i'm pretty sure that's what he says but this was not weird for me but there's multiple ways you could like interpret it sort of like was the priest part of this all along was this his plan or did he get possessed and you know possessed and then to look after the, the new devil baby but yeah this was a quite a good ending and quite a this was very story based and i quite enjoyed it to be honest i did very i did enjoyed this one a lot but yeah throughout the film there's things like priest getting killed getting reanimated to then attack other priests and things like that. There's corpses, like, decomposing in the room because no one can go in there or you'll just die. But uh, the worst scene for me, definitely when the girl throws up tentacles and then eats them. Like, it's like Chinese or something. Um, <laughs> that was very weird. And also the, the tentacles are a lot of the, what do you call it, like, the posters. I think in, like, a few of the posters I've seen, there are tentacles. So this was like, this was a good thing to mark it on, to be honest, because it didn't let me down. I was expecting tentacles and uh, I got tentacles, whether or not I liked it. And lastly, we have the full form, which is called Sacrifice. And this was released in 2017. In my opinion, this is just the worst one. Um, but when I say worst, I don't mean like terrible. You know, it's all right. It's all right. And I, from what I read, I couldn't find it, but I read it like a, a week ago and I couldn't find it and I, I forgot to take a photo of it. But I think it was a film that was already made that the director of American Guinea Pig saw and then wanted to make it into a guinea pig film or wanted to market it as a guinea pig film. If that's wrong, please correct me. But I think that I think that's similar to what it is or he took the, the concept or whatever, 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 you know what I mean? But basically, the story is, I got no clue, if I'm being honest. <laughs> it's an hour long, the film. Um, the story just wasn't there. Um, it's similar to the third one, but like the third, Amer not American guinea pig, the third guinea pig one, he never dies. But it's missing the humor. And that just makes it not bad to begin with, but the idea of it, not good. He's not invincible in this one, but he does do stuff to himself, which is, you know, insane. But in the third one, the reason it was funny is because the concept alone is funny. You know what I mean? Someone ripping out their own organs? That's something you don't see in films like this. You normally see someone else doing that. So it's already sort of a bit of a stupid concept to begin with. So it worked really well with the humour. But... The wounds aren't 100% like fatal in uh, this film, to be honest. It's just like drilling himself, uh, like, you know, like slicing himself and, you know, just pulling toenails off, things like that, which was 
the toenail was really hard to watch to be honest i didn't think how much i'd, I'd cringe at that but um i've read a bit of the story online and what it's supposed to be about and it still didn't make sense to me there's something about a god and him wanting to have sex with the god that's about <laughs> as much as i got from it but apparently he goes back to his childhood home after years of abuse or something and that was like in the bathroom where he did everything but yeah i'm not 100 percent sure on this the acting was definitely the worst in this i know i said i don't really care about the acting but this one just um it's hard not to care about this because there's a there's a horrible like forced it sounds forced like a british voiceover for the whole thing it sounds for false which was quite awkward because why would you force a british accent it wasn't even set in britain i don't think um but the worst scene for me definitely he put a screwdriver in the the pee hole <laughs> So, yeah, that was the, the worst scene for me. And here we are, moving on to the ranking. So, fourth place, we have Sacrifice, obviously. In third place, we have Song of Solomon. In second place, Bokeh. And in first place, Bloodshock. And this is just my opinion. Again, feel free to leave your one in the comments below. Um, I would love to see what you guys think of this. But now, I'm just going to quickly say which one I prefer and why. And then I'm going to rank all of them. And now I'm going to say what ones I prefer. And I'm pretty sure everyone that's watched this video all the way through knows what uh, one I'm going to say I prefer. Uh, it's obviously the, the Japanese ones, the original ones. But here is the why. You know, I'm not one of the people that just says, okay, this is better. I'm actually going to give a reason to why I think they're better. Of course, if you think the American ones are better, let me know in the comments below because... Obviously, as I said, I'd, I'd like to know why you like them better and things like that. So, even though the American ones on their own are good movies, and I ver I enjoyed watching all of these movies uh, um, over the past week, they just don't have the charm that the Japanese ones did, and it's really hard to explain. But if you've watched them, then you'd know. Because they didn't always take themselves too seriously in a lot of them. It creates a different vibe to the American guinea pig ones, and it's something which I enjoyed watching more. But the only one which stood out for me in the guinea pig ones is a mermaid in a manhole. But that's because it had a really good story and a really good way of moving the story forward. So with movies like this and you have gore and everything, you can either do what the first American guinea pig did, where it's just straight gore, things like that. Or you can have like a story or humor to carry it along. So this is where it gets hard, because if you do humour and the humour's bad, it makes the film bad. Same with the story. If you have a story, the story's bad, it makes the film bad. So it's sort of a, a very hit or miss thing. So with the Song of Solomon, it had a good story, so I, I enjoyed it and things like that. But Sacrifice didn't have a good story, so I didn't like it. And it's just as simple as that. The same with Android. Didn't like the story, didn't like the movie. Mermaid, loved the story, loved the movie, things like that. It's like gore comes second to it, which I prefer. But obviously this is my opinion. Maybe people think for them that gore should come first, story comes second. And that's fine. Just let me know in the comments what you think. I like reading other people's opinions and knowing what they think of things. And the, the last thing I have to say comparing the series as a whole to one another is the length. The length of these ones was a lot longer than the Japanese ones, as the Japanese ones, I don't think any of them went over 50 minutes, which I really like. I really like short films that just get to it. And these ones, if the story's bad, which they wasn't in this case, but say if Sacrifice was an hour and a half long, that would have been like, honestly, one of the worst and most boring experiences of my, of my life and things like that. But Song of Solomon and Bloodshock, I feel, were a good length. Maybe could have been a, a little bit shorter, but they definitely weren't too long, which is the main thing. And now I'm going to move on to every single one of them ranked. So, in 10th place, we have Sacrifice, obviously. As, I, as you can probably tell, I didn't like that one, but it was an okay film. In 9th place, we have Android. Again, didn't really enjoy it. In 8th place we have Solomon. I enjoyed this one, but it wasn't as strong as the others in like compared to story and gore and things like that. It was the most tame out of all of them. And on to the 7th place we have a Bokeh. Um, this one was good. This one was like very, very mid, I would say, in my opinion. But obviously, 
let me know your rankings of these in the comments below. In 6th place we have Devil's Experiment. Again, this is just very mid. I feel like these two, because they don't have much story, they're just very, very mid to me. In 5th we have Bloodshock. I really liked this one, I don't know why I liked this one. And in 4th place, Flowers, Flesh and Blood. 3rd place, Devil Doctor. Second place, Mermaid in a Manhole, and in first place, He Never Dies. It's the same as the ranking for the other one. But yeah, let me know your ranking on these in the comments below. I'd love to see them. That is all I have to say on these films, and I haven't really seen many videos on YouTube, like, ranking these films or, you know, doing reviews on them. I've seen a few for, like, the, the odd one or two films, but I've never seen everything in one video, so I thought I would make one because, you know, I enjoy the films, but I have been watching a lot of videos, and all these opinions, um, I wouldn't say they're mine, they're not mine, I mean, I agree with them, but, like, a few of them, I did get off a few channels, like, a uh, couple of creeps, and things like that, so I'm gonna leave a link to the channels in the description, which I watched, to sort of get more insight on these films, to make this video better, but apart from that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment, leave a like, why not subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.